Around a dozen FTSE 100 firms are due to publish first half or full year results in the week ahead. And there are some real heavyweights involved, so we'll quickly gloss over the macroeconomics this week, other than to flag the latest American, German and Chinese inflation figures. They're due on Thursday the 10th from the USA, and then Friday the 11th from the other two. Central bankers, economists, politicians and consumers will all be hoping for a little breathing space here. Remember, the last readings were, based on the year-on-year change in the Consumer Price Index, 7.1% in the USA, the fastest rate of increase since February 1982, 1.5% in China, a retreat from the prior month's 15-month high, thanks in part to the dampening effect of Omicron and lockdowns, and 5.3% in Germany, the highest inflation reading since July 1982, although we have had a preliminary reading for January already, and that suggests the rate of inflation did ease a little bit at least to 4.9%. Important to those readings are the the company news could well take precedence in the week ahead. Names which may be worthy of further note and further research include the following, although some of these dates could of course yet be subject to change. So watch out for Lamprell and Big Target Blue Prism on Monday the 7th of February. BP, Ocado, SSE, Bellway and DCC on the 8th. Glaxo, SmithKline, Barrett Development, Smurfit Kappa and Dunelm on the 9th. AstraZeneca, Relics, Red Row and Watches of Switzerland on the 10th. Before WPP, British American Tobacco and Lancashire Holdings round out the week on Friday the 11th of February. But the company that could really cause the biggest fuss in the week ahead is Unilever. The consumer goods giant, which has hardly been out of the headlines of late this year, is due to release its full year results for 2021 on Thursday the 10th of February. Now the shares are down by a little over 10% over the past year as I recall this, whereas the FTSE 100 is up by some 15% over the same time frame. And there are several possible reasons for this underperformance. First, the company has been struggling to reach the sales growth and profit margin targets outlined by Chief Executive Alan Job. More of those in a moment. Second, investors have been looking for cyclical recovery plays as a way to benefit from a post-pandemic, post-lockdown upturn, rather than more stable, staple providers like Unilever. Third, some shareholders, notably Terry Smith of Thunsmith, have publicly criticised the company for letting its purity of principle perhaps restrain its profit potential. And most dramatically of all, shareholders ran for cover when it emerged in early January that Unilever had offered to pay £50 billion for the consumer products business jointly owned by GlaxoSmithKline and Pfizer. GlaxoSmithKline's demand for £60 billion prompted fears that Unilever would overpay for its prize, saddle itself with too much debt in the process, although it's now backed away from that deal. However, Mr Joke could perhaps still be on the prowl for other targets. Now that leaves executives, stakeholders and shareholders alike with plenty to contemplate as we look forward to the full year results for 2021. Analysts will first look to the headline numbers and they'll do so from the perspective of consensus forecasts for 2021, guidance for 2022 and how both of those stack up against Mr Jope's medium term sales and profit margin targets. And they are underlying organic sales growth of 3 to 5% a year and an underlying operating margin of 20%. Now to look at sales first, the consensus forecast is for a top line revenue figure of 52.1 billion euros for 2021. That represents a 2.8% increase on a stated basis and a 4.3% increase on an underlying basis, smack in the middle of Unilever's target range. For the fourth quarter alone, analysts are looking for a 3.8% underlying increase. Attention will then switch to the mix of sales growth between price and volume. For the fourth quarter, analysts are looking for a 4.5% price increase and a 0.7% volume drop. Across the whole of 2021, they're looking for a 2.7% increase in prices and a more modest 1.5% increase in volumes. Unilever's brands are one of its strengths as they can confer pricing power and provide some degree of protection from inflation. And that's a hot topic across markets right now. Analysts will then look to the individual divisions to check out underlying sales growth and the price volume mix. 
This is particularly important now as, having already sold spreads and a big portion of its tea business, Unilever is clearly looking to further refine its portfolio and focus on what it sees as the faster growing areas of personal care and beauty. Following the failed bid for the GlaxoSmithKline consumer products business, Unilever announced a new five division structure based on beauty and well-being, personal care, home care, nutrition, and finally, ice cream. So any detailed breakdown here could be interesting. As a final point on sales, analysts have penciled in 54.5 billion euros as a forecast for 2022, should Mr. Joe provide any guidance. That equates to a 4.6% stated increase and a 4.1% gain on an underlying basis, again, in the middle of the target range. Profit will then be the next port of call. On an underlying basis, operating profit is seen as reaching 9.5 billion euros in 2021. That's a margin of 18.3%, below the 20% target and a little bit down on 2020's 18.5% return on sales. For 2022, analysts looking for 9.9 billion euros of operating profit on an underlying basis for a margin of 18.2%. So again, no great improvement, which may be why Mr. Jope is feeling some pressure to be seen to be doing something. Shareholders and analysts will then look to dividends and buybacks. The consensus forecast for the fully dividend is 1.71 euros a share. That works out at around 145.5p and is enough for a 3.9% historic dividend yield. Unilever announced a €3 billion Euro buyback in April and finished that in December, so shells will be looking for any guidance here for 2022. The statement will also be scrutinised for more comments on strategy and any response to the arrival on the share register of activist investor Nelson Peltz of Tryon Partners. Under Mr Jope's leadership, Unilever shares have lagged those of global peers such as L'Oreal, Procter & Gamble, Mondelez and Nestlé, and the shares generally traded a discount to those peers on earnings and a premium on yield. The heat is seemingly on to see if Mr. Joke can change that, not least because Unilever shares once again trade below the £40 a share cash and stock offer made by Kraft Heinz in 2017, an offer rejected then by boss Paul Pullman and shareholders alike. And you could say that given Kraft Heinz shares have collapsed in the meantime, that may not have been the daftest thing to do. I hope that you and your families are all in good spirits and keeping well. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.